I consider Becker my mentor because he was the guy who was immediately canceled before me. Um, I Is he still all, alive, by the way? No, he's dead. He okay. died in 2009. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I just got finished telling Nicole when I was in Dallas that I actually f physically sat down and talked to him about what I'm talking to you about now. And he was the one that told me, he goes, you need to understand what happened to me. He goes, you have to be very careful about who you're getting ready to go against, and which was the industrial military complex. And, you know, this guy was twice nominated for the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. And literally, he was so frustrated with, you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm sure you have heard in your life as a podcaster that most people think is conspiracy theory, and it turns out it's really not, and it's the truth. Right. He got frustrated, and then in 1977, he goes on 60 Minutes and tells the world the problem with non-native EMF. And you have to realize, my friend. Non-native EMF? Yeah, that's wireless technology. Right. It's blue, blue light, light screens, mm -hmm. it's fluorescent bulbs, it's RF microwaves, the whole shebang. 1977, nobody has a microwave oven. Nobody has a cell phone. And how did this problem with Becker kind of show up? It shows up because the military wanted to build this antenna called Sanguine in a lake in Wisconsin. What was the purpose of the antenna in 73? So they could keep control of all the nuclear subs all over the world. Because right. right now, they before that, they couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So they were building this thing, and they hired Becker because of the stuff that you had just talked about that Becker was working on limb regeneration, and he found out that limb regeneration uses the electromagnetic force to do it. In other words, the physics of regeneration is all based on semiconduction. That's the thing that was shocking about him. And how did I come upon his uh, research as a resident at the same time? Why did I know about all this stuff? I'm a neurosurgery resident, and I'm doing a lot of spine reconstructions. Well, Bone was the subject of Becker's work. So my mentor in neurosurgery, Dr. David Klein, said, Jack, I want you to do a project on bone regeneration. I want you to use this guy's Becker work because what he found in 59 through 67 was absolutely shocking. Most people still don't believe that that's how it happens, but I want you to present it to the residents. So that meant I had to go read all his papers. Mm -hmm. So I learned about this. And, you know, most people who listen to this podcast, what I'm about to say won't believe this, but it's axiomatically true. You don't heal bone ever. Bone regenerates completely. So, for example, if you break your arm right now mm -hmm. and you go have surgery and the, the orthopedic surgeon opens it up and looks for where your previous break was, there's no scar. Really? None. It's one of the few tissues in man where that's the case. You know, most people know about it with the liver. You can cut half a liver out and it'll grow back. But we as mammals, especially the end of the line mammals, we don't have that ability in a lot of different areas. So what does Becker do? He does a bunch of work to figure out actually how this happens. And it turns out we create a DC electric current in us that actually causes red blood cells in the marrow to de-differentiate. In other words, a red cell becomes a bone cell, and that is what heals the fracture, and it completely regenerates it so that there's no scar. So, of course, he writes all this stuff up. Then he finds out actually how this goes, like collagen and appetite that are part of bone are actually semiconductive proteins. He does experiments that show... Bone emits light just like an LED diode. And just remember, this is going down in the 60s, bro. So that's how the military found out about Becker's work. Right. Okay. And he was the expert. Like, he was the Anthony Fauci of his time in bone regeneration. He worked in the VA hospital in Syracuse. So he had huge government contracts. He was, he was very, very prolific. So in 73, when the government comes to him, they're like, look, we want to know, will this antenna, since it's going to use RF radiation, does it have any biologic effects for the people in the military or the people that live around it? Becker does the work uh, with guys in his lab, and he finds out it does. He writes a report in 73 to the, the Secretary of the Navy, and they were stunned with what he found. And he kept writing reports. The next thing he started to notice 
that all this stuff in the Federal Register never got published. In other words, the research went in, but it never left DARPA. And no one ever did about it. So what did Becker decide to do? Now, I don't know where you're from or where your family's from, but I'm originally from New York City. At the same time, we have a governor in New York named Hugh Carey. Mm. They're trying to get electric power lines go from the city up to Niagara Falls to get more transmission lines. So uh, Becker starts doing some work on these power lines to prove to the military that that freaking antenna in Wisconsin is a real problem. And he does something that's, to this day, most people still don't know this. You know, they still think it's conspiracy theory. Yeah. Um, that power lines can harm you. But him and Marino, who is the guy that was in his lab, he's a biophysicist, became a lawyer to defend Becker. They did a study on 765 kilowatt towers that are everywhere, even here in Cell Florida. Cell towers? Yeah. No, these are, elect remember, there's no cells right, okay, yeah. at this time. Yeah. These are electric towers for the power grid. Mm -hmm. They changed the Earth's magnetosphere 80,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. They proved this in 1974, 75, 76. And not only did they write the military, not only did they give this information to you, Carrie, they gave it to all the electric power companies and everybody was just like stunned, okay? So you have to remember, this guy is, he's like freaking Joe Montana of science at this time, and no one is listening to him because why? His message is very inconvenient. It's a truth, mm -hmm. and right. it's mm -hmm. a time we're retooling our economy from an industrial economy to an information technology. So the power grid's a big deal. The use of non-native EMF, Intel, Microsoft, Google, this is all the precursor stuff at this time. The big company at that time, which you probably know, is IBM. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, IBM was already working on liquid crystal and displays that was using a lot of this stuff. And DARPA was involved in that too. So DARPA and the military sucked Becker in. They're fueling and fueling and fueling it until the truth comes out. And what does he do? 1977, he's so frustrated, he gets on 60 Minutes and he tells the world the truth. The th he tells them exactly what I just told you. When I said it to you, your eyeballs got yeah. you know, really big because a lot of people even now, 50 years later, don't realize what he's really found is that all of this shit has biologic effects. I don't care what it is. Like you put those Apple things in your ear, Dude, that's the stupidest thing you could ever do. I stopped using them a few months ago. I got the wired ones now. Yeah, uh, that's not good. The either. wired ones probably aren't good either. No, right? because you're still getting jump conduction into your ear, which will bring you to my work. My work is the next level of Becker. Like if Becker had lived, mm -hmm. he would have looked for the source of the DC electric current. Well, we found it. 